Saturn and Jupiter begin to dominate the night sky, and we take a look at how you can find a comet. Let's go out and explore the night sky for September of 2023. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. With no major meteor showers, we jump right into our closest neighbor, the moon, beginning with its phases. September starts out with a third quarter moon on the 6th, followed by a new moon on the 14th, first quarter moon on the 22nd, and full moon ending out the month of September on the 29th. Some events to keep in mind this month include the moon moving close to Jupiter on September 4th, Uranus on the 5th, Saturn on the 26th, See if you can spot any of these events this month with just the naked eye or a pair of binoculars. And if you're able to get out to see and enjoy anything in the night sky this September, please be sure to let us know about it in the comment section below. After months of waiting, the two most impressive gas giants, Saturn and Jupiter, finally begin to dominate the night sky once again. Let's begin with Saturn, which is gonna be visible for the entirety of the night for all of September. Saturn begins September low in the southeast, but gets to some nice heights for viewing or imaging around 10 p.m. It's right around this time that Jupiter will begin to poke just above the horizon, but nice views of it in September won't come until around midnight. One interesting thing to mention about Saturn when you go out to see it this year is the tilt of its rings may not be as dramatic as you expect. As it orbits the sun every 30 years roughly, we get a different perspective during that journey of the angle and tilt of the rings from our perspective here on Earth. As we approach the peak of this event in 2025, Saturn's rings will continue to look thinner and thinner as you observe them. If you're able to get out to take a picture of Saturn, please share it with me over on Instagram, and I would love to be able to show off some of those pictures in our next installment of the night sky coming up this October. Along with Jupiter and Saturn this month, you early birds out there will be able to see Venus rise high in the east right before sunrise, with Uranus trailing behind Jupiter and Neptune hitting opposition this month on September 19th. While this isn't the busiest month for comets that we've had this year, there is one making its close approach to Earth around September 26th that you might be able to go out and see with a telescope. Comet 103P Hartley will be making its closest approach to Earth around September 26th. At this point, it may be visible using binoculars under dark skies, but I plan on sticking with my telescope to view this one. Let's take a look at where it'll be in the night sky late this September, before the moon gets in the way to brighten up the sky and maybe even make the comet not observable. Between September 18th and the 26th, it'll be traveling through the constellation Auriga with it traveling pretty close by the star Theta Auriga on the night of the 25th. Don't expect much more than a faint blur through the eyepiece of your telescope. This is going to primarily be a Northern Hemisphere comet, but depending on where you live in the Southern Hemisphere, it might just be high enough above the horizon to give it a try with your telescope as well. As we leave our solar system behind and travel into deep space, it's important to remember that getting away from as much light pollution as you possibly can, and that does include the moon, is gonna be key to maximizing your experience with these objects. I also wanted to mention an incredible printed guide and star atlas to the night sky that was sent to me by Cambridge University Press. As much as I enjoy my astronomy apps, there's still something special and beneficial about having a printed guide to help plan a night out under the stars. The Interstellarum Deep Sky Atlas and Deep Sky Guide are two of the finest printed guides to the night sky that I've ever used. With an easy to navigate system of grids that takes you to the correct page for the part of the sky you want, and deep sky objects being listed in order of visibility ranging from a 4, 8, or 12 inch telescope, this is a guide that is meant for the serious observer and imager, but does not have a steep learning curve. After finding your section of the sky and the objects listed using the Deep Sky Atlas, you can then see how they look through the eyepiece with a hand-drawn sketch presented in the Deep Sky Guide. 
It's as simple as turning to page 61 in the Atlas to find the Orion Nebula, and then turning to page 61 in the guidebook to see gorgeous and realistic sketches of it drawn by someone who has observed it. I'll leave a link in the description of this video if you're interested in checking it out. And my thanks to the authors and publisher for sending me over a copy to share my thoughts on it with you all. Now let's focus this month on the core of our own galaxy, the Milky Way. From where I live in the Northern Hemisphere, this is about the best time of year to get out and explore the dense core of our own galaxy. Begin by going out and finding the dense core of our own galaxy with the naked eye. Then switch to a pair of binoculars and slowly work your way through the immersive star fields that make it up. As you come across something interesting, switch to your telescope to explore it in more detail. As you're scanning the Milky Way, stop by and take a look at M11, the Wild Duck Cluster. This is one of the most impressive open clusters in the night sky, almost appearing as a globular cluster due to its density. Next, move your way down the Milky Way and look for the Eagle Nebula M16 and the Omega Nebula M17. Just below this is the large Sagittarius star cloud, which was so dense that I had to actually go to a darker sky just to verify that it wasn't a blur of light pollution I was seeing from my own backyard. Next, we have the Trifid Nebula. At roughly the size of a full moon, this can be a breathtaking view through binoculars and a telescope under dark skies. Just below Trifid, we have a star-forming region of space known as the Lagoon Nebula. While best viewed with binoculars or a telescope, it can be viewed with the naked eye under good sky conditions and almost no light pollution. Finally, work your way down the Milky Way to M6, the Butterfly Cluster, and M7, Ptolemy's Cluster. My best experience observing the Milky Way was about 30 minutes from my home under darker skies with no distractions, where I could slowly move through the density and beauty of the center of our own galaxy. Under the right conditions, you'll lose track of time and get lost in the wonders of this region of space. Those are just some of the incredible things that you can get out to see and image in the night sky for the month of September. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let us know what you hope to get out to observe and image in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.